What if I told you a man in Zimbabwe just broke every known law of the auto industry by building a bus that runs on thin air? Yes, you heard that right. No fuel. No charging station. Just innovation, pure and raw. This isn't science fiction. It's a world exclusive. Welcome to the future, and its name is Maxwell Chikambutso, the man behind the miracle. Maxwell Chikambutso, an unassuming genius from Zimbabwe, has just stunned scientists worldwide. While most of the world's auto giants are pouring billions into electric cars and charging networks, Maxwell skipped the entire playbook. Instead, he created a bus that doesn't need fuel or even a traditional battery. His secret? A mysterious technology called the Greener Power Machine GPM, a device that can generate electricity from radio frequencies and atmospheric energy. In other words, from the air around us. It's more than a bus. It's a rolling challenge to everything we thought we knew about energy, transport, and innovation. The Breakthrough Bus, dubbed the Airbus by locals, Maxwell's latest creation just completed a 5,000-kilometer real-world test drive across southern Africa. No pit stops, no fuel bills, no emissions. Witnesses from Harare to Lusaka watched in amazement as the bus glided quietly through their cities. An engineering marvel in motion. Government officials, engineers, even skeptics came to see for themselves and left speechless. We checked the engine. There's no combustion, no gas tank, not even a solar panel. How is this possible? Engineer, Lusaka University. The science or the mystery. Maxwell remained protective of the exact blueprint. What we know is that the GPM converts radio frequencies into usable energy on the move. Unlike solar or wind, it works day and night, rain or shine. This isn't just a bus. It's the birth of a new energy era. Imagine cities without charging stations. Imagine Africa powering its own transit future, wirelessly, global shockwaves and industry disruption. Zimbabwean inventor defies physics with fuel-free transport. Has Africa just leapfrogged the EV revolution? No fuel, no plug, no problem? Tesla, Toyota, BYD, all scrambled to understand what just happened. And while some dismissed it as a hoax, others flew directly to Harare. Business jets landing in Zimbabwe. High-level delegations touring Maxwell's lab. Quiet meetings behind closed doors. They didn't come for photo ops. They came because they know. If Maxwell's tech is real and scalable, everything changes. Oil giants lose leverage. Electric charging infrastructure becomes obsolete. Africa becomes a global innovator, not a follower. The African awakening. Across the continent, a spark has been lit. In Kenya, city mayors are asking, can we convert our entire fleet? In Nigeria, engineers are sketching adaptations of the GPM for homes and motorcycles. In South Africa, entire factories are pivoting to build Maxwell-compatible systems. This isn't just a bus. This is energy freedom. For once, innovation is coming from Africa for Africa. Female engineer Nairobi. Maxwell's invention has inspired not just investors and technologists, but everyday dreamers. From teenage coders in Ghana to garage tinkerers in Ethiopia, people are realizing the fight begins. But not everyone is cheering. Reports of suppressed coverage, vanished interviews, and digital sabotage are already surfacing. Energy cartels? Foreign lobbyists? Corporate interests? No one knows for sure. What is clear? Someone wants this story buried. A major international news outlet scheduled a feature, then pulled it hours before air. Online videos explaining Maxwell's tech? Taken down for policy violations. Yet, the bus keeps rolling. And with every kilometer it covers, the old system trembles. Maxwell's message to the world. In his first public address since the global media storm, Maxwell Chikambutso stood calmly behind a modest podium in Harare. No teleprompters. No sponsors. Just a man, his vision, and a crowd hanging on every word. This invention was never about money. It's about sovereignty. It's about proving that Africa can innovate, can lead, and can liberate itself from dependency. The crowd erupted. Children waved flags. Elders wept. This wasn't just the launch of a new kind of bus. It was the rebirth of belief. 
Maxwell's words echoed far beyond Zimbabwe, in classrooms in Senegal, in refugee camps in Sudan, and in science fairs in Rwanda. Students began quoting him. The rollout begins. Just weeks after the announcement, the first pilot fleets were deployed. In Lusaka, Zambia, ten buses began operating on city routes, monitored by local engineers and universities. In Accra, Ghana, a cross-country test with zero fuel stopped shock skeptics. In Kigali, Rwanda, the government signed an MOU for domestic production of GPM units. Data gathered from these trials proved undeniable. Zero emissions. Zero charging downtime. Maintenance costs dropped by 70%. And range? Over 6,000 km with no fuel tank. The world could no longer look away. Ripple effect across the globe. From the crowded streets of Lagos to the sunlit highways of Cairo, Maxwell's idea was no longer just a story. It was a movement. In Brazil, startups began retrofitting old diesel buses with Maxwell-inspired systems. In India, researchers proposed using GPM tech to power rural villages. In Europe, green think tanks are now modeling post-grid transport systems, citing Chikambutso protocols. And the question on everyone's lips? If a single Zimbabwean inventor could do this, what else is possible? The world responds. As the shock waves of Maxwell's fuel-free bus reached every continent, the reactions were electric. In Berlin, transport ministers held emergency briefings on what this meant for oil-reliant economies. In Washington, D.C., analysts debated the threat this posed to fossil fuel markets. And in Tokyo, engineers from some of the world's most advanced auto companies requested meetings with Maxwell's team, some openly, others quietly. The buzz wasn't limited to governments and corporations. Social media exploded with hashtags. Hashtag Maxwell Effect. Hashtag Airbus Africa. Hashtag Fuel Free Future. Influencers, vloggers, tech analysts, even comedians rushed to cover the innovation that seemed pulled from science fiction. But beneath the excitement, there was tension. Oil giants began funding fact-check reports. Some news outlets hinted at safety concerns. And whispers of industrial sabotage in Africa's tech corridors began to surface. Define the doubts. Maxwell didn't flinch. He doubled down. He opened up transparent testing sites in Johannesburg, Nairobi, and Kigali, where anyone could inspect, measure, and test the buses themselves. Engineers from MIT and Cambridge flew in. Journalists from Al Jazeera, BBC, and TechCrunch streamed the results live. University physics professors put the GPM tech under microscopes. And what did they find? It worked. Not magic. Not illusion. Just science. Boldly applied. Ethically executed. A continent awakens. Across Africa, a quiet revolution began. Local garages in Malawi and Tanzania began experimenting with retrofits. High schools introduced Maxwell's technology in science curriculum. African investors, long overshadowed by foreign capital, banded together to fund new EV factories. This wasn't just Maxwell's moment anymore. It was Africa's rise. From a continent, once seen as a consumer of global tech, to a creator, a disruptor, a leader, the turning point. What began as a single bus silently gliding through African landscapes had now become a movement, a symbol of resistance, resilience, and reinvention. In Kenya, President Odinga announced tax breaks for startups using clean propulsion. In Nigeria, a consortium of young engineers launched an air engine challenge, inspired by Maxwell's design. Even South Africa's parliament debated a continent-wide Fuel-Free Transit Corridor, a visionary network of roads and services tailored for this new generation of vehicles. Meanwhile, oil stocks faltered. African innovation stocks surged. And yet, not everyone was cheering. The pushback intensifies. Behind closed doors, the pressure grew. An anonymous leak revealed internal memos from major car manufacturers labeling Maxwell's tech as a global destabilizer. Several multinational fuel companies quietly began lobbying African governments, offering infrastructure upgrades in exchange for delays in GPM-based vehicle adoption. Journalists investigating these maneuvers were warned. Maxwell's own communications began facing cyber attacks. But the inventor? He remained undeterred. 
In a live press conference in Addis Ababa, Maxwell delivered a single powerful line. We do not fear disruption because we are the disruption. The crowd erupted. The feed went viral, unveiling the future. Now, Maxwell's team wasn't just building buses. They were creating the first GPM-powered car plant in Harare, a high-speed, battery-less train prototype nicknamed the Lightning Spine. Microgrid stations that required no external power, powered by motion itself, and most shockingly, a prototype for a self-powered aircraft. Yes, an aircraft. In early concept drawings leaked online, the vertical lift vehicle required no jet fuel, only motion, vibration, and Maxwell's patented radio frequency energy harvesters. Africa was no longer just making headlines. Africa was building tomorrow. Global tremors. As word spread of a self-powered aircraft prototype, the global reaction turned from skeptical curiosity to strategic panic. In Berlin, a leaked EU report warned that GPM-based transport could render 60% of Europe's fossil fuel logistics systems obsolete within a decade. In Washington, defense officials requested briefings, not for adoption, but to assess the threat potential of fuel-independent fleets. Meanwhile, Asia was watching closely. China dispatched engineers to Zimbabwe under the guise of a green partnership initiative. India's tech incubators began quietly investing in GPM reverse engineering. But Maxwell? He wasn't selling out. He wasn't licensing. He wasn't even seeking validation. Instead, he opened the doors of the Green Tech Open Lab, a cross-border innovation hub, where African scientists, youth engineers, and open-source believers gathered to co-develop GPM systems for agriculture, mobility, and even water desalination. The turning of the tide, an idea, a technology, a future. In Dakar, GPM-powered irrigation systems turned once barren land fertile. In Kampala, GPM motorcycles created jobs for youth with zero fuel costs. In Windhoek, mobile health clinics ran fully on motion, serving thousands where diesel trucks had failed. Global media couldn't ignore it anymore. CNN, Al Jazeera, BBC, all now ran specials titled The Man Who Defied Physics, Maxwell Chikambutso, Africa's Energy Rebirth, The Fuel-Free Revolution, The Resistance Cracks. But not everyone was ready to change. In London, a tech conference invitation to Maxwell was revoked without explanation. In the U.S., rumors swirled that lobbyists had pushed for his visa to be blocked. In Geneva, a quiet push began to challenge the scientific validity of GPM at the U.N. level. And yet, the world had already seen too much. Too many buses. Too many kilometers. Too many children now studying under lights powered by movement alone. Maxwell addressed the criticism directly in a now legendary interview. They say it defies physics. Maybe. But tell me, does hunger follow physics? Does inequality? We don't need more approval. We need courage. A new era begins. It was a quiet morning in Harare. No red carpets. No big banners. Just a simple plaque outside a garage that read, Made in Africa. Made for the world. That day... The first mass-produced self-powered buses rolled out, not for sale in Paris, not for display in Silicon Valley, but for schools in Zambia, hospitals in Malawi, and rural towns in Mozambique. Buses that didn't need gas stations. Buses with no tailpipe, no battery swapping, no noise. Buses that ran on motion, air, and genius. Maxwell wasn't just building machines. He was building trust. Trust that Africa could invent not just import, that we could lead, not just follow. Children now grow up not just dreaming of Teslas, but of Chikambutsos.